Morgan Snyder. I'm Taylor Shoemaker. And I'm Jonathan Tober. And today we have Monk's Cafe Flemish Sour Ale. Uh, this is actually a, a fun one. This is actually the, um, uh, gosh, I can never say it right. It's Van Steenberg B. I, I'm not even going to try it. It's, uh, it's actually a very famous uh, Belgian brewer. Um, and the reason it's called Monk's Cafe is because it's actually associated with the, the Monk's Cafe out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Which, which I have been there. He has been. On total accident. <laughs> I was walking down the street in Philadelphia, saw this place, thought it looked cool, went in there, sat at a bar with like six people and left with a $200 tap. Yeah. And, so is it a brewery? And nothing of beer well, at the time. No, no, was it a brewery, the Monk's Cafe in Philadelphia? or is No, it's, it... it's, it's literally just a cafe. Okay. It's like, it's one of the only places on the East Coast you can get Pliny the Elder. Which I'm excited about. I'm going to California to get just handfuls of it. Uh, but what happened was the owner uh, went out to uh, to Belgium. He's he, he has one of the most the most recognized list of Belgian beers in the East Coast. He's extremely like well known in the beer community. Um, and so what he did was he went over to Belgium and he constantly samples the beers and, and talks with all the Belgian brewers. And what he did uh, was he talked to to the Van Steenberg. Uh, group because his one of his favorite beers is, is is this. It's one of his favorite Belgian sour beers. Which may be a good segue to Flemish sour, which mm -hmm. would be all right. So Flemish. Well, well, the right. thing, well, the thing is, it's actually a, a sour brown. Okay, so when you think of like a Flemish sour, usually you're thinking from Flanders, of course. Yeah. And it Flemish beers are usually red. Am I correct? Yes. You okay. Are exactly correct. And you're saying this one's going to probably be more of a brown. This is from what I read. It is a is it a it is a sour brown. Um, and what he did was he talked to the family. It's it started out as an extremely limited release beer. It was he got so frustrated not being able to find it that he was like, "Look, I I will pay you money to make this my beer. Like we will sell it as a, as a house beer for Monk's Cafe, well known." See, and that's what I think. I think I had it there, but this was two years ago before I got into beer culture. Odds are I probably had it, but I don't remember. So I'm really excited to try this. Yes. So and, so, I, and so stylistically, what's interesting on the back is it says a blend of young and old ales. Mm -hmm. So, you know. Well, but, but that's stylistically true to, to, true to the art. You cannot make a sour ale young and you cannot make a sour ale by itself old. You have to blend the young with the old to make a, a distinctively good beer. It's, it's, it's the wine blending. Flower, sours are, are traditionally the wine blending style and they cannot have a sour ale as it is. And we are not a brewing show. But if we were, we are not a, something we might discuss. Always the disclaimer. <laughs> uh, something we might discuss is how you actually make what is considered to be a sour beer. And um, it is open fermentation. So can you elaborate not, a little bit on that? Yeah, yeah, not necessarily open fermentation. Generally, that is how they do it in Belgium. Uh, but there are a lot of places on the west coast and, and even, even just mainland US that, that do it. And what you do is you introduce a lot of wild strains like Britannomyces, lacto, Lactobacillus, uh, each of which impart a very distinctive flavor. A lot of the times, actually, uh, sours, especially like Flanders and stuff like that, they introduce a Lactobacillus uh, as well as as well as Britannomyces into it from open fermentation. Thank you. Lactobacillus is actually the, the yeast strain that gives it that distinctive sour flavor, whereas Britannomyces is very much a, a barnyard yeast. It does impart sour flavors, but you're, when you smell it, it's like you just walked onto the farm. And so I think what, this is the point that Morgan's getting yeah, at is that a wild yeast is something that exists in our environment mm -hmm. every day. Um, being able to control those and determine which flavors you want from those wild yeasts is very challenging. So to actually make a sour ale is it's a craft. It, it's very, very difficult very because you, you, there's some yeast that you want and some that you don't, mm -hmm. and they're going to impart certain flavors. I, and I, I've actually, I actually had a home brew that actually turned sour after I, I forgot about it. it. It ended up in the back of the, the cellar, and I pulled it out like four or five months later, and it's it was it had a subtle sour appley flavor. And I was like, this is this is not the beer I made. <laughs> yeah. And it's just imagination. It was actually really good, and it was a it was a natural Virginia. Yeast, I'm like, sweet. <laughs> Plus, one other thing, too. Um, sometimes people just don't like sours. Like, it yeah. is a very much an acquired taste. We had some buddies in town last night, and we had them try a sour beer. Well, and they, well, 
It was, it was not supposed well, to be yeah, sour. It was not supposed to be sour. Let's, <laughs> let's clarify that. But it was sour. And you were like, this is good. Yeah. yeah. This is fantastic. They were like, God, no. Well, <laughs> no, I, th I think what you're what you're getting at is a sour ale, it's going to be tart. Yes. It's going to think of like warheads we all have here in some say, yeah. to trade them And it's going to be like, it's really going to tickle your cheeks and, mm -hmm. you know, it's an acquired taste. Just the same as hops are. So yep. when you don't necessarily shut something off because you don't like the first one you have, you know, try it a couple try times a couple. and it'll, yeah, it'll totally grow on you. Yeah. And if it doesn't, we won't yeah, judge you. Cool. I'll be honest, my <laughs> first one was La Folle from, from um, New Belgium. I wasn't a fan. It was very tart. And yeah. Sour. Oh, yeah. I remember we had that. Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's go ahead and do this and sip this up. Not a real strong nose. Mm -mm. A little bit, but I mean, more malts than anything. Whoa. Mmm. Whoa. That is tasty. That is insane. Okay. Oh man. Oh, that's very complex. Definitely tickling the cheeks. Oh. Tickling the cheeks. Good. I definitely saw some drool come down. There. <laughs> Seriously, it is like take yourself, like, please. It is now called uh, Warhead. <laughs> it is not Hops Cafe. Um, but it, it was, that's okay. I, I don't know if anyone else experienced this, but I took a sip and I was like, boom, sour flavors. Oh it's yeah, small, it's there. But I got like very maltiness in the back end, and it was like, it, it was weird. It, it, I not what I expect from a lot of the sour. It's beers. sour and fruit up front, and then malt right in the back. Because underneath that sourness, there is a very distinct fruit flavor, and. You get it's like an apple or pear or something like that, and then right when you swallow, you can definitely feel the malts definitely come yeah. through. And sour is typically a flavor we kind of associate with things that are bad. Mm -hmm. But think of like sour apple. Like I like sour, sour, sour apple. Sour good, apple. Yeah. And, I, and I think this is a good Great example of all the way. It, yeah, like it's this. It's you, you hit it right on the head, man. It's that sour flavor, but that malt balances it out, and so therefore you yeah. have a very yep. it, it, which which is truly a testament to blending. Yeah, like, it is. Like that's the young and old right there. The, the the wild yeast is so interesting in that it, it, it will it's very it will complex. constantly age. It's never done it's never done its work and it will change the flavor over time. So if you have a sour ale and you age it in your cellar, it will change from a slightly sour to really, really sour flavor yeah. as it gets older. If but I was to recap that I'd say like you get a sweetness. Oh you get yeah. a tartness. And there's also like a, a a clean sort of flavor. Yeah, it might do like there's nothing. There's nothing left. It might. Yeah, honestly, like um, one of the things I really enjoy is pairings. This would actually go some with something really fatty or yeah, it's yeah. Like the bubbles because of scrubbing, scrubbing, scrubbing bubbles. Yes. <laughs> yes. And, and honestly, it's one of those things. It's like you could definitely eat like a really nice steak and maybe you know mid, mid rare rare steak. It's in there. It's greasy. Take a sip of this. Totally cleans it out. You're ready for another. Oh, that would be, Yeah, that's yeah. a perfect pairing. Now I want. I'm to actually steak. kind of visualizing chicken. See, I don't. I could not like see I chicken being. I could see. Well, I could see the light meat actually kind of complementing the uh, the sour flavors, the fruitiness. Because chicken is one of those things. Yeah, barbecued, I could see that, but yeah, not I'm like saying, yeah, I, I think chicken, that, right, fried that, chicken, that charred, that, that that you know. Yeah, it needs like that American man meat flavor <laughs> behind. Oh god, that sounds. so... <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, I know. It's, um, it's just a family show. show. Yeah. <laughs> A family show about beer. Hey, there's nothing wrong. <laughs> Starting young. You yeah. enjoy American man meat best. <laughs> <laughs> cheers. We don't cheers. 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 Have a good night.